My name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to this Power Up webinar looking at video compression inside Adobe Media Encoder CS6. The goal for today is to show you how the software works and how you can compress your video and audio media assets into something that looks wonderful on the web or transcoding for other editing applications. Oh, by the way, we have a new subscription service where all of our online video training, tutorials, and webinars are now available via subscription. This includes all of our new Final Cut Pro 10, Adobe CS6, and Autodesk Smoke training. For one low monthly or annual fee, you get streaming access anywhere, anytime via the Internet. Plus, subscribers can attend any of our live webinars for free. This is a fast and low-cost way to access all of our online training. And to learn more, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions. What I want to cover today is to explain what Adobe Media Encoder is. We also call this AME for Adobe Media Encoder. You'll see me use both terms throughout this presentation. I'll illustrate how it works and how it works differently from Compressor. I'll show you how to use it for both simple and complex tasks. And we'll illustrate some sample settings and things to consider and discuss a few limitations of the software. Adobe Media Encoder CS6 is media compression and transcoding software. It's bundled with Premiere Pro, After Effects, Prelude, and Encore. It supports both Macs and Windows. It runs in the background, has a relatively intuitive interface, dozens of convenient compression presets, and it can create multiple versions of source files, which saves you time. And it also supports watch folder automation, which simplifies the whole process of compressing files. Adobe Media Encoder runs on Windows as well as Macs, which makes it a really good choice for many users. It supports video formats which are not found in Apple's compressors, such as Airy Raw, 5K Red Epic Files, and Red Scarlet X Files. It supports MXF OP1A, which is a standard in the broadcast industry. It creates Flash FLV and F4V files, including Flash Cuepoints, as well as Windows Media files, WMV files. It creates DG Fast Channel, builds image sequences from or to QuickTime movies or other video sources, supports Blu-ray compression, and developing files for Android. It supports watch folders for automated compression, and in fact, I'll show you how this works as part of this presentation. And it's integrated with Premiere, After Effects, Prelude, and Encore. In fact, you don't even need to export files from Premiere or from After Effects. You can go direct from Premiere directly into Adobe Media Encoder and out to Encore or to the web. This is the interface for Adobe Media Encoder CS6. It contains four panels. The Q panel, this is where you drag movies that you want to compress. The encoding panel, this is where files show up when they're being compressed. And by the way, the word encoding and the word compressing are essentially synonyms. Now, a purist would argue that you can encode without compressing, and frankly, that's dancing on the head of a pin. So we'll use the word encode and we'll use the word compress to mean the same thing. When you are changing a file from one format to another, you're encoding it. New with the CS6 release is the preset browser. These are all your compression settings, and they're grouped into several categories. First, two major ones, user presets and groups, which are files that you create, system presets, which are files that Adobe created, and then individual categories within the system presets, audio compression only, broadcast, camera, devices, DVD and Blu-ray, web video, and others. Down at the bottom is watch folders. This is where we automate the compression process. We'll talk about that toward the end of our presentation today. Just as we can with other Adobe applications, we can configure a new workspace by moving tabs around. The only problem is there's just four tabs. Moving them around doesn't really make a whole lot of difference. You can resize tabs by clicking in a vertical line between two panels and dragging left or right, or dragging up and down to resize things, perfectly OK. But really, the default workspace, unlike other Adobe applications, the default workspace works just great. So most of the time, you're not going to want to reset this, though you can if you want to. Well, let's take a look at something really simple. I want to compress a piece of video. To do that, I'm going to import the video. We can do this in several different ways. Here's an easy one. I've got a folder filled with files here. And let's grab, oh, let's grab this one and just simply drag it over, drag it into the Q category. Several things happen at once. One, the file is added into this Q panel. This means these are the files that are about to be compressed. 
and it applies a series of settings. It looks for and applies either the default setting, which is a flash movie, if you have never used media encoder before, or it applies the last setting you used. There are three different columns here. First is what category is it in? There are a variety to choose from. H.264 is ideal for the web. QuickTime is a good choice if you're transcoding for editing in, say, Final Cut or Premiere, as well as a variety for Blu-rays and DVDs and other functions. Now, not all of these are relevant. DPX freeze frames and JPEGs and PNGs and TIFFs are all image formats, say, for creating an image sequence, and most of the time we don't pay attention. So first, you select the category. In this case, I'm just going to leave this as is. Then you select a compression setting. This is saying it's compressing for Vimeo. Within the H.264 category, we have all these different settings for Android devices and Apple Eye devices and HD formats and NTSC and PAL. And whew, there's a lot to pick here. In this case, I'm going to just leave it set for Vimeo. I'm going to show you a better way to pick than simply from that list in just a minute. If you look really, really closely up here in the headers, you're going to see a thin vertical line. You can grab that vertical line to change the distance between columns to make it easier to read what's going on. This allows you to set the output file. The output file is where does the file go once it's compressed. By default, unless you change things, Adobe Media Encoder saves the file to the same location as your source file. The problem is I can never remember where my source file came from, so I always change the default duration. To do that, we can do it on a case-by-case -case basis or globally. To do it case-by-case, -case, just double-click it. When you double-click on the name of the output file, it says, where do you want to save this? Well, where I want to save this is on one of my external drives my third drive, I've created a folder, I created this, called Compressed Files. And I set this Compressed Files as the default duration of every file that I compress. When I click Save, notice that it's going to my third drive, the Compressed Files folder, and it's named with the same file name as my source file, but not the same extension. The benefit to this is I never have to worry about where my compressed files are going to go. They're always stored in exactly the same place, always in that compressed files folder. So the source can be anywhere. It could be on a server. It could be on one of my locally attached hard drives. I never care because I can never remember. I just want to know where the final version ends up, and it always ends up in the same spot. So I dropped in a video. I assigned it a compression category, first a category, and then a particular setting, and then I determined where the destination is. Notice I don't have to tell it what the source format is. Media Encoder figures that out. I just need to tell it the final setting. I want it to end up ready for Vimeo. It's a standard definition widescreen at 29.97 frames a second. This has been an excerpt of a recent power-up webinar on video compression using Adobe Media Encoder CS6. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.biz store and look for Webinar 75.